Good morning and welcome to Second Congregational Church Online, where whoever you are or wherever you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. You are welcome here this morning, however, and whenever you are watching, whether you're watching live on YouTube or via the church website or later online or on Cat TV, you are welcome and invited to bring your whole self before God during this time of worship. I'd like to especially welcome any new friends who are with us for the first time. You are welcome here. Glad that you are with us. And I'd like to thank all of those who help uh, make this time of worship possible. Matt Edwards, our music director, Sue Green, our church musician and handbell choir director, and our liturgist this morning, Lorna Cheriton. A reminder that I invite your prayer requests. Uh, if you're watching live, you're welcome to put those prayer requests uh, in the chat on YouTube, and we'll pick those up later when we get to the time of prayer um, in the service. Throughout the week, you're, you're welcome to email me your prayer requests um, in my church email inbox. Today, we are blessed with a beautiful fall day. Uh, if, you know, it is a little chilly, uh, and so I'm, I'm happy that our, our Front Yard Fellowship will be able to go for it, and I look forward to seeing a few of you at one of the locations today. And we will also have our customary Zoom fellowship time directly following the worship service. With that, let us remember who we truly are that each of us is a beloved child of God, created in the divine image and loved beyond all measure. And so let's sit with that for a moment. Pause and remember who you are. And as you are remembering that, breathe in slowly and out and listen to these centering words. Draw near to God, and God will draw near to us as we serve and minister together.
living God, move among us and awaken us to your loving presence. When we lose our way and put our confidence in our possessions and our wisdom, call us back to you. Remind us that our very identity is dependent on your abiding mercy. Show us how to walk with steadfast faithfulness, following the path of justice and goodness in our daily lives. May our days be filled with joy and hope as we share the good news of abundant life that comes from following Jesus Christ. In the power of the Holy Spirit, we pray. Amen. God is gracious and merciful and knows our needs even before we form the words to utter them. Still, we engage in confession, admitting to God all that rests uneasily in our hearts. Confident in God's love, let us pray together this prayer of confession and a transformation. God of mercy, we place our trust in tangible things, things we can see and touch and question whether you are really there. Forgive us, Holy One, when we fail to recognize that you are always nearby, patiently waiting for us to recognize your presence and your glory. Help us when we lose our way, and forgive us when we forget to whom we truly belong. Lover of justice, open our eyes to see you, open our ears to hear you, open our hearts to love you, and open our hands to serve you. Amen. When we cry to God, looking for favor in God's sight, God answers, my presence will go with you and I will give you rest. In the power of the Spirit and in the name of Jesus, we are forgiven. We will rest in God's mercy. Let us sing together. Rock of ages, cleft for me. Let me hide myself in thee. Let the water and the blood from thy wounded side which flow be of sin the double cure. Save from wrath and make me pure. Not the labors of my hands can fulfill thy lost events. Could my steel no respite flow? Could my tears forever flow? All for sin could not atone. Thou must save and thou alone. Nothing in my hand I bring. Simply to the cross I cling. Naked come to thee for dress. Helpless look to thee for praise. While I to the fountain fly. Wash me, Savior, or I die. While I draw this fleeting breath, when my eyes shall close in death, when I soar to worlds unknown, see beyond thy judgment throne, rock of ages left for me. Let me hide myself in. This morning, we begin our fall stewardship campaign for 2021, and the theme for our stewardship campaign is celebrating our gifts. And I got thinking about that theme this morning and decided to call a bit of an audible for this moment for, of, for social justice. I thought about, can we, should we during this time be celebrating the gifts of our African-American brothers and sisters, our African-American siblings, the gifts that they've given 
throughout our country's history. And I was thinking about Thelonious Monk, who's one of my favorite musicians. Thelonious Monk was a jazz musician of the bebop era. era. He really defined the bebop era of jazz, and it's a particular style of music that I love and has meant a great deal to me. We would not have African American, we would not have, I'm sorry, we would not have jazz music if not for African American contributions. Jazz has often been called America's contribution to world art. And we have it because of our African American siblings. So this morning for our moment of social justice, our moment for racial justice, I'd like to celebrate the contributions of black artists, of what they've meant to our culture as a country and to our lives. Whether they are jazz musicians or rap musicians or artists, painters, writers, actors, Black artists contribute so much with their gifts. And so this morning, I'd like to pause and celebrate that. Let us pray. Loving God, we are so, so grateful for the contributions to culture that, is made, that have been made by our Black brothers and sisters. Sometimes we take it for granted But this morning, we want to celebrate and lift them up. We are grateful for them. We ask that you would guide those black artists, those, especially the young ones, help them be all that they might be, to share their gifts with us and move our culture forward in ways that we have yet to imagine. We pray all this in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Then the Pharisees went out and laid plans to trap him in his words. They sent the disciples to him along with the Herodians. Teacher, they said, we know that you are a man of integrity and that you teach the way of God in accordance with the truth. You aren't swayed by others because you pay no attention to who they are. Tell us then, what is your opinion? Is it right to pay to Caesar the imperial tax? That special tax levied on subject peoples, but not on Roman citizens. Jesus, doing their evil intent, said, You hypocrites, why are you trying to trap me? Show me the coin used for paying the tax. They brought him a denarius, and he asked them, Whose image is this, and whose inscription? Caesar's, they replied. Then Jesus said to them, So give back to Caesar what is Caesar, and to God what is God. The opponents of Jesus think they have him trapped. They've set a perfect, they think, trap for him this morning. They've, they've, set, they've set him up. However he answers their question, he will be in trouble with someone. They've asked him if it's lawful, if it's right for Jewish people to pay taxes to the empire. Now we need to understand that the taxes are um, to be paid with a special imperial coin. And on this coin is an image of Caesar, uh, Tiberius Caesar, and an inscription that reads, he is divine. Now, the, just the coin alone was offensive to Jewish believers. That 
and so many of them didn't want to handle it at all. And and the reality was they could get by with in their lives without ever having to handle this coin, except that they had to use that coin to pay taxes. So if Jesus answers that, yes, we should, we should be paying our taxes to the empire, he's going to upset those that want to resist the empire. On the other hand, if Jesus answers, no, we should resist and not pay the taxes, he will be labeled as a seditionist, traitorous. They can bring him up on charges. They have Jesus, they think, in the perfect double bind. But Jesus turns their question back on them. He asks them, give, give me the coin. Let me see that coin. And he looks at the coin and he says, whose image is this? It's Caesar's. So give back to Caesar what is Caesar's and give to God what is God's. You know, when I selected this passage this morning, I thought, that it would be a relatively straightforward one, and I've struggled all week to figure out what I wanted to t say to you this morning. You know, I've been trying to record the worship service, the sermons on Saturday, so that I can be in the church and sh sh have have a clear message for you, and it did not develop that way. And so I am here talking to you live. And I think what I've, what I was struggling with was that Jesus doesn't answer the question. Jesus leaves it up to the people to decide what do, what do we give to Caesar and what do we give back to God. What does it mean for us here and now? And it's always difficult as a as a pastor, as a preacher, to not answer a question that Jesus doesn't answer, <laughs> but to try and make some sense for us of What's the, what, what the scripture is about, what's going on. And so I'm narrowing in this morning on the Greek word here for, that is translated as give. Give to Caesar what is Caesar's and give to God what is God's. That Greek word that is translated as give has a fuller meaning in the Greek that is closer to give what is obligated. To give what is obligated to Caesar and give to God what is obligated to God. And so this morning I'd like to just reflect with you on our obligations. What are we obligated to give and to whom are we obligated to give it? Because it's not always as clear-cut. So what are our obligations to our country? What are we obligated to give? We all pay taxes. And that much seems clear. <laughs> the money that we carry has images of Americans and presidents, not gods. So we give back to Washington what has Washington's image on it. But what other obligations do we have? Obligations as citizens. Are we obligated to participate? To vote? Does that obligation carry with it an obligation to be informed?
What about to our political parties? And what obligations do our political parties have to our country? Is, is their only obligation to their members and to advance the party's cause and agenda? Or do the parties have some obligation to the country? Do our obligations as citizens carry us forward that we must support the country at, a co at all costs to the point of unjust war or unjust practices? These are difficult questions. What are our obligations to our community? Obligations, again, as citizens. To serve as so many of you have. Military service, public service, service in the police, to the schools, as teachers, as support staff. Service. <laughs> what is my cat's obligation? He's, I'm sorry, I apologize. I'm being very distracted this morning. Um, what are our obligations uh, of service? And you have, so many of you served in so many ways. Medical service, that was the next one. Service as nurses. Do, do those obligations follow to our particular social class? Racial obligations? Lots of questions this morning. Questions that maybe have clear answers and maybe don't. But I think we need to ask these questions. What are our obligations to our families? To our pets? To be patient with them when they are Sometimes uh, Spartacus is a great co-pastor, <laughs> and sometimes he's a great distractor. What are our obligations to our families? To put our families first? Maybe sometimes. What are our obligations to our church? To supporting our church? This is the question we are asking ourselves during this stewardship campaign. This time of stewardship is a time where we reflect upon what are, what are we to give? How are we to give? How are we to give of our time, as so many of you do, of our talents, What is our obligation to give of our financial means, of our financial gifts? What are our obligations to the coming kingdom of heaven on earth? Ah, God, finally, finally getting to God. What are our obligations to God? You know, that, that word image comes up in Jesus' question. He doesn't say, who is this on this coin? He says, whose image is this? Icon, image. Which calls to my mind Genesis chapter 1. It says that humans are 
made in the image and likeness of God. And so to give to Caesar what is in the image of Caesar, to give to God what is in the image of God, means to give to God our whole selves. It means that our obligations to God touch on all of those other obligations that we've reflected upon to this point. And Jesus says that we are to love. That is our obligation. That is how we give back to God, to love God and to love our neighbor as we love ourselves. And we remember that there are three loves in there, loving God and loving our neighbor as we love ourselves, not instead of loving ourselves, but as we love ourselves. Because we are beloved by God. We are made in the image of God. So I think that we are obligated to become the, the person, be, to become all that God means us to be created us to be, and to love that person that God created us to be. Obligations as citizens to this country, but as more so as citizens to that coming kingdom of heaven on earth, a kingdom ruled by Christ, Christ, love made incarnate, love enfleshed, love made human. So as we ponder our obligations, I suggest that our true citizenship is to that kingdom of love, and that we should allow ourselves to be ruled by that. Amen. And in that kingdom of heaven, in that kingdom of love, we share with one another our joys and we celebrate our joys together and we share in our concerns and we share the burdens of grief with one another. So I invite you to this time of prayer. And as I say, God, in your mercy, I invite you to respond to hear our prayer that each prayer is our prayer collectively. Let us pray. A loving God, we are yours, made in your image. And so we know that you hear all of our prayers. Prayers this morning that all in our community that all in our community may know what is God's and what is Caesar's and may have the courage to so to live. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray that justice and peace will be the signs of our trust in God. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray that the church in the spirit of Paul may preach the gospel not merely in words, but in the power of the Holy Spirit. That we would be love enfleshed, love with hands. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray that each of us following Jesus may be truthful courting no one's favor, but living with simplicity and honesty. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray that 
Like the apostle, all the people in the church may live their faith and labor in love for the poor, the homeless, the imprisoned, the persecuted, and the sick, and that by God's power the suffering of all creation may be relieved. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray that wherever there is violence, especially within a family, we may be enabled to confess our part in allowing this darkness to continue. We have shut our eyes to the cries of fear and pain. And so, O oh God, we pray that your healing may come to all homes. Hear us, O oh God. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray, O oh God, this morning for those facing transitions in their employment and for all the anxiety and personal doubt that come along with these kinds of transitions. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You hear all the prayers of your people, O oh God, and so Hear now the prayers of your people of Second Congregational Church. Prayers for Joe's brother, Phil, who is now in a memory care unit. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for George and Janice as they travel May they be safe as they are traveling now to Oakland to be with Pat, George's sister-in-law, as they grieve George's brother, Charles. And we are with them in their grief. And may they be surrounded by our love and your comfort, O God. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray, O oh God, for our beloved Lou, Lucille, who has been living in Springfield for some time, but has remained close to our hearts, O oh God, as she has now transitioned to hospice care, as she has been faced with pancreatic cancer. We remember Lou this morning and that we pray for her comfort and for her loved ones and family. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For migrants and refugees and their families everywhere, O oh God, we are in solidarity with them this morning. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We continue to pray without ceasing for Matthew as he continues to battle cancer and for Robin and the whole family as they continue to care for Matthew. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We lift up our brother George to you this morning who now finds that he again has cancer, bladder cancer. And it is early, God, we don't know what the treatment or prognosis might be, but we lift George up to you and his beloved Grace as they figure out what the next steps are. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for Nancy Jean, who has been in the hospital all week after a fall, and that she is facing a lengthy recovery. We pray for comfort for her and for Tom, her beloved. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We 
give thanks, oh God, for this morning's weather, that it is chilly but beautiful. And we ask your blessings upon our front yard fellowship that we would gather in our small groups outdoors safely in this time. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O oh God, you hear all of our prayers, whether we hold them silently on our hearts or if we have lifted them with our voices. And so we pray that we may remember with gratitude the witness of those who have kept faith in your triune name. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your hands we place the well-being of all creation, O oh God, trusting that you see and know the needs of all. And we pray as our Lord taught us to, saying, Our God, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Good morning. I'm David Adams. First, thank you for your continued support throughout the current year. I'm here today to start the annual pledge campaign for 2021. Before I go into detail, I'll share a short story about the time my sister and I asked our mother if we could sell lemonade. She said yes. After our adventures were over, she sat us down and explained that we owed her for the sugar and the lemons. Thus began my financial training. Over the years, we have had dedicated folks working on our finances. Many years ago, Carolyn Ostrander took the cash offering home, counted and recorded it by hand, and then walked the funds in her purse to the bank. Not something we would do these days. It is all also important to thank Bill Lyons, who has guided the coronavirus loan process through its many and rigorous stages. We are awaiting the financial certification of our loan from the federal government. Until the certification is received, we cannot share it as income. We must also thank Mike Day and his thank you Thank you and thank you and many of our previous pledge messages and campaigns. A little history right now of how we're doing with our giving this year. As of the end of September, we're approximately $10,900 ahead of where we were last year at this time. It is now my turn to take over the reins of asking you for your pledges and financial support. You, the members and friends of Second Congregational Church, have been supportive and generous in your faithful and financial gifts beyond any reasonable expectations. It is my hope and prayer that all of us along together can continue this honorable tradition of supporting our God-filled lives. Thank you. We are celebrating our gifts this stewardship season. And over the next couple of weeks, we will be highlighting people who give a lot of their time to make Second Congregational Church all it is. So this morning, I'd like to lift up David Adams to you who has spent countless hours over so many years working on our church financials, auditing, 
helping keep the books and keeping track of all of our, all of our investments and making sure everything is in place. Dave continues to give hour upon hour looking after our church and our financials, as do our trustees and Robin, our church administrator. We are grateful and, and fortunate to have so many people with so many gifts in, these, in this realm. And so let us support one another in our gifts in the giving in the way that we are giving our time let us support those who give their time with our financial gifts so that second congregational church may continue to be a place where we can celebrate all of our gifts this week you will receive a stewardship letter in the, in the mail with a pledge card and a return envelope that is stamped and so I invite you to prayerfully consider um, how you will support Second Congregational Church with your financial giving next year. As you do that, I am grateful for your support of, uh, of Second Congregational Church now and your many gifts of time and treasure and talent. And so let us bless our offerings this morning. God source of all that is, lover of justice and source of equity, help us live boldly and truthfully as we seek to follow your ways. Embolden us to share with others the gift of grace that you have so abundantly given us. Receive and bless our gifts that we return to you now. In the name of the one who gives life, we pray. Amen. And so, having been transformed by this encounter with God's grace, let us remind one another how we are to be. Go out into the world in peace, be of good courage, hold fast to that which is good, render to no one evil for evil, strengthen the faint-hearted, support the weak, help the afflicted, honor all people, love and serve the Lord, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. And receive this blessing in the words of the Apostle Paul. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us go in peace to serve the Lord. Amen. <laughs>